Okay, let's get this right out there at the start. These ships do make me angry. Very angry. Um, like, what on earth were these designers thinking? What was wrong with them? The reputation of German engineering quality just dies when confronted with these things. Now that's over and done with, <laughs> let's look at some of the reasons why I think they're so terrible. We've already looked at HMS Dreadnought, the ship that started it all, as well as the USS South Carolina, and how these two ships represented different types of technical advancement that pointed the way forward for future Dreadnoughts. Now bear in mind that the British ship came into service in 1906, the same year the American ship was laid down. All other dreadnought type battleships were being designed and most navies recognized that the pre-dreadnought type was done. So along comes the German Navy. They decide to look at what their great rivals are building, all the technical achievements they're making, what mistakes they're making, and then decide to write a checklist that pretty much takes all the bad bits and wraps them up in one package. Now, whereas with some of the other ships and the Japanese Satsumas, you could be excused for saying, well, they're the first of their type, the Germans could see all this, and they did the following. Well, I see the British using turbine engines. They can go faster for long distances. Nah, let's use the old triple expansion engines, and so we're much slower, and we can't keep up the speed for that long. Oh well, I see everyone else thinks that 12-inch guns are a fantastic idea. I don't think so. Let's use our standard 11-inch guns that have less explosive power, let's have really small magazines, slow turret traverse, and fairly bad armour penetration. Oh, and while we're at it, let's make sure we can only load the guns when they're basically at flat trajectory, so we have to re-elevate them every time we want to fire on someone that isn't right next to us. More on that later. Right, I see the Americans here have invented the super-firing turret, and the British have staggered their rear turrets so they can both have eight-gun broadsides. Let's get an eight-gun broadside by having six turrets instead of four or five, and we'll put two on each side so the ship is really wide, hilariously unstable, loses loads of speed every time we try and do anything other than sail in a straight line, and so basically at one time a third of our guns aren't actually going to be pointing at the enemy. Clearly, this is the correct and proper way to design a battleship. Oh yeah, and on top of that, I see everyone else has ditched having secondary and tertiary batteries, since that's one of the main points of having a dreadnought with all the big guns. No, I think let's, let's keep a full secondary battery of 5.9 inch guns, and a full tertiary battery of 3.5 inch guns. I'm sure that'll help. You see my problem? Now, to be perfectly fair to the Nassaus, pretty much all of these problems came from one particular decision, and that was the triple expansion engines. They didn't have a reliable source of turbine engines in Germany at the time, and they didn't want to import any turbine engines for their battleships, so they were stuck with vertical triple expansion engines, and that meant a very big engine space, which forced the turrets out onto the wings, and with the extra weight and volume taken up by having to widen the ship and all these old engines, even if they'd wanted to go with 12-inch guns, then they really couldn't because they didn't have the displacement left. But at the same time, re-engineing ships is a thing, and you weren't always going to be without turbines, so unless the Germans were planning a war in like the next two or three years, there shouldn't have been anything wrong with bringing in foreign turbine designs and then just replacing them if it became necessary. The Germans were on their way to developing their own turbines. And the 11-inch guns, while they weren't too far off some of the worst 12-inch guns in terms of firepower, all those other issues about slow turret traverse, limited elevation and poor reloading facilities, there's not really much excuse for them, to be honest. And likewise for the secondary tertiary battery, the 5.9 inch gun is perfectly fine. You don't need the 3.5s. Now on the bright side, things weren't all bad. They had commendably thick belt armour, which was 12 inches thickness, and they had a very large number of subdivided watertight compartments, which would make them very durable. Due to their being quite fat, they could also turn very quickly, even if they were waddling along by the end of the turn. In the end, uh, the Germans would build four of them. Nassau, Westfalen, Rhineland, and Posen. 
And it seems that Poseidon or Neptune or some other deity agreed that these ships were offensive to sanity and rationality, as they seem to have been plagued by failure and bad luck during their operational lives. Once World War I started, the Germans sent eight battleships and three battlecruisers, including the four Nassaus, to the Gulf of Riga to get rid of Russian naval forces so they could capture the port. During these shenanigans, and the Nassau and Posen ended up fighting a lonely Russian pre-dreadnought, the Slava. This was the fight they were made for, and they even had numerical superiority. They managed a grand total of three hits. The Slava didn't care, and would only withdraw when ordered to by her superiors. The whole German fleet was then sent running when a random British submarine appeared, out of the blue, and torpedoed one of the battlecruisers. Next came the Battle of Jutland. After a day of not doing all that much, the Nassau came across the British destroyer HMS Spitfire and tried to ram it instead of shooting it. They collided, but the 20,000 ton battleship failed to sink the 950 ton destroyer, so they now tried shooting it, but the destroyer was so close that the guns couldn't point down far enough. The blast took off a lot of the flimsy superstructure of the destroyer, but in exchange the Spitfire made off with a 20 foot long section of the battleship's main armour plating on its deck and managed to make it back to port. Incidentally, the collision would also knock out a 5.9 inch gun and left a 12 foot gash in the hull just above the waterline which forced Nassau to slow down to 15 knots for repairs. At the same time, the Posen managed to find the German cruiser Elbing, which of course was on their own side and rammed it. Yeah. This time they managed to do the ramming thing properly and the 5,000 ton cruiser had to be abandoned and scuttled. Again, to a bigger ship that was on their own side. <sighs> oh well. Just after midnight the Nassau found the British cruiser HMS Black Prince and managed to actually shoot at it alongside three other German battleships who unsurprisingly were the ones who did most of the damage. The cruiser exploded, and the wreck drifted into Nassau's path. Trying to avoid it, the Nassau almost rammed the German battleship Kaiserin, and had to engage full reverse to avoid the class sinking two friendly ships at the same battle. This left the Nassau in company of two German pre-dreadnoughts, and isolated from the main battle line, presumably out of shame and with the pre-dreadnoughts slowly edging away from them. Finally, in 1918, the Rhineland was sent with other ships to help Finland fight the Russians, and this wouldn't be the last time. It then promptly ran aground and got stuck so badly that they had to take off over a quarter of its weight in armour, guns and other important things just to get it off again. It was never repaired and would spend the rest of the war as a barrack ship. At the end of the war, whilst the most valuable and modern ships of the High Seas Fleet were sent to be interned at Scapa Flow, not even the British wanted the Nassaus and left them in Germany. After the end of the war, three were ceded to Allied powers and one stayed in Germany. Everyone immediately scrapped them, and I think you can understand why. Most auspicious start for the German dreadnought battleships, uh, but trust me, they do get better. A heck of a lot better, and we'll see some of them later. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.